the leaders at that time, as well as those of us that followed them, were, comparatively speaking, people who were patriotic. Exit of a patriot, Nigeria mourns as a quintessential politician, diplomat and orator passes on. Nigeria presides over Peace and Security Council at ongoing summit of African Union. Implement nuclear power program. It is by this that we will be judged. Nigeria's nuclear capabilities under assessment even as engineers focus on power sector reforms. Good evening. I am Ainde Shuaga in Abuja. In Lagos is Ademola Adoye. Koto is Zainab Abdul Nasser. President Muhammadu Buhari has sent a personal letter of condolence to the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, in which he expressed profound shock over the death of the elder statesman, Dr. Yusuf Meitama Suli. The letter, personally signed by the president, described the death of Alaji Suli as a heavy loss. In a statement by Senior Special Assistant, Media and Publicity, Garba Shew, the president extended his condolences to Kano State Governor, family, friends, and the people of Kano State and Nigerians as a whole for this loss. Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo has expressed deep sorrow over the passing away of Alhaji Meita Masule. In a tweet on his handle, Professor Oshimbajo expressed deep and heartfelt condolences to the family, friends, and associates, and the government of Kano State. Acting president who described the deceased as an orator, elder statesman, and diplomat prayed Almighty God to grant him eternal rest. History will never forget the man, Yusuf Meitama Sule, the Damasan in Kano, for his outstanding role for, to what is today called Nigeria. This was reflected in his entire life as a nationalist having served from pre- to post-colonial era in various national engagements. In this special tribute, Abdullahi Garba Kudu looks back at this man of honor. The leaders at that time, as well as those of us that followed them, were, comparatively speaking, people who were Patriotic. Yusuf Metama Suli, a man of his world who had been in national limelight right from pre-colonial to post-colonial era, his selfless service and contribution to national struggle and emancipation of the African spirit of development as a diplomat, politician and international orator brought much respect, dignity to Nigeria as well as a guide to succeeding generation. Indeed, the Damasani was a social mobilizer of high repute right from the development of the Nigerian state. Hospitals, adult education classes, schools, bridges and roads are all built and made for your own benefit. Born in 1929, the Damasani Kanu participated actively in national politics and had been part of the struggle of independence of Nigeria. His appointment as Minister of Mines and Power in 1959 and that of oil provided a platform for the development of Nigeria's oil and gas industry. This resulted in the Nigeria's membership in the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, and the establishment of the national oil company now known as NNPC. As an international orator and mobilizer, let Metama Sule commended respect at whatever occasion, which made him a mentor to all. As a politician, the late Amasan in Kano left a mark as a believer of politics without bitterness, having conceded defeat to Alhaji Shehu Shagari as one of the aspirants in the 1979 presidential election of the National Party of Nigeria, NPN. Not only did I concede him, but I also campaigned for him. I always believe in one thing, anybody that has an edge over me, age-wise, qualification-wise, or otherwise, I would give I would give him that respect. 
like I read the larger symbols, followed by my camera, followed by myself. And we agreed that we have to do the right thing because somebody has to leave this country and somebody has got to be given responsibility for leadership. Very jovial. There's no dull time with Metama, right from the time when we were young. And he was very popular. Any time Metama goes and meet with people, within a small period of time, he would be very friendly with all of them because... As Alaji Yusuf Metama Sule died, many believe his legacies will outlive him as a true nationalist that believe in the unity and indivisible entity of Nigeria. Let us be our brother's keepers. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerba Brunokudu, NTA News. It was a sober and sad mood at the residence of the elder statesman, Yusuf Mitama Sule, after news of his death at the Cairo hospital came in. Mohammed Rabiu Ali reports that sympathizers, friends and relations trooped to the house to condole with the family. That was Ambassador's relative weeping after receiving the news of his death at Dawaki Road in Kano City. When NTA News visited his residence, friends, relatives and mourners were still trooping to condole with his family. The mood that pervaded the house was solemn and sympathetic. Let Ambassador in Kano, Alaji Yusuf Metema Sule, died at the early hours of this Monday after a protracted illness in Cairo. Family sources confirmed that his remains will be flown to Kano on Tuesday. The cops will be flown in tomorrow at 1 o'clock, and the funeral rites will take place 4 o'clock at the Emir's Palace. Meanwhile, Kano State Government has declared tomorrow, Tuesday, as work free day to mourn the death of the elder statesman. From Kano, Muhammad Rabiwa, NTA News. Senate President Abubakar Bukola Saraki has described the death of elder statesman, the Damasan in Kano, Alhaji Yusuf Meitama Sule, as a loss, as a great loss of a nationalist. Saraki, in a statement by his special advisor, media and publicity, Yusuf Olani Yonu, described late Yusuf Meitama Sule as a detravelized Nigerian who spoke truth to power at all times during his lifetime. More on the late Yusuf Meitama Sule, Speaker House of Representatives has described the death of Meitama Sule as a great loss to Africa. In a statement by his special advisor on media, Turaki Hassan, the Speaker, Yakubu Dugara, described the late Meitama Sule as a patriot and icon of peace who was committed to the peace and unity of Nigeria even at old age. He condoled the family of the late elder statesman and the people of Kano State and prayed God to grant his soul eternal rest. Acting President Yemi Oshimbaju joined other heads of state and government in Addis Ababa for the 29th Assembly of the African Union. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports that the focus of the meeting is on harnessing the benefits in the increasing population of youth for a greater African continent. The full package will be brought to you in the bulletin. Nigeria's robust nuclear plan, as presented by President Muhammadu Buhari at the Nuclear Security Summit last year, is gaining momentum. The nation's domestic competence in ensuring global safety standards is currently undergoing evaluation. Fisayo Ogufuyi reports that 12 nuclear safety experts from the International Atomic Energy Agency are in Nigeria for the assessment. Nigeria's participation at the Nuclear Security Summit in the United States last year signposted efforts by the continental power to convert the vast potentials in the peaceful uses of nuclear energy to solve some development challenges in the key sectors of the nation's economy. The efforts of the federal government and key players in the sector seem to be yielding positive results one year on. 
The International Atomic Energy Agency has 12 of its experts in Nigeria to evaluate the nation's competence in ensuring global safety standards in the deployment of its technology in areas like research, agriculture, power, oil and gas, and healthcare delivery. It's clear that from this experience in the nuclear field, some benefits could be also derived for other uh, uh, applications, uh, uh, taking into account that uh, the regulatory framework uh, of, uh, in the nuclear uh, sector is in particular on the uh, safety-related aspects. We are trying to implement nuclear power program. It is by this that we will be judged and the international community will have confidence in the fact that we can regulate nuclear processes properly. The 12-day peer review program will see the IAEA experts inspecting some facilities across the country, including Nigeria's nuclear research reactor at the Amadou Bello University, Zaria. In Abuja, Fisayo Gonfuyi, NTA News. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Up ahead, Nigeria Customs Service moves to eliminate congestion at the ports. Stay with us. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. She just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliamp battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Slow, madam. Everybody won't make a put them on top. You remember eight days man correct me when I charge hundred naira, then go give me eight hundred naira. You don't have very wrong. No, every end of the month, then go give me back. Buy an Airtel SIM and get back all your recharges as data bonus by month end on Smart Connect. Hey. Airtel, the smartphone network. Most of the people here are from the IDPs. They are local farmers and agro farmers. I'm a farmer. That sofa when we are the sofa last last. No sofa but now we are getting machine when they help farmers to work in here. No problem but now everything is easy.
future assured project of the wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, is carrying out free medical screening and distribution of food items at various IDP camps while ensuring the economic empowerment of women through training and skill acquisition. In recognition of her efforts, wives of governors have lent their voices and support. In Kogi State, we feel the impact of Future Assured, especially in women and children. The Future Assured program of Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Bahari, the wife of the president, has been very assuring and still reassuring in Sokoto State. It has impacted positively in the areas of humanity, especially women and children. Supports the Future Assured initiative. Email programs at futureassured.org.ng Future Assured promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. Law on Prevention and Detection of Crimes by the Police in Nigeria by Dr. Solomon Ehigiato Arasi, former Inspector General of Police, Federal Republic of Nigeria, on Tuesday, 4th July, 2017, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Venue, Congress Hall, Transcorp Hilton, Abuja. Special guest of honor, His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshinbajo, GCUN Acting President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Chairman, His Excellency Mr. Donald Dew. His Excellency Godwin Obase State. Major General Babagana Mongonu, National Security Advisor. General Gabriel Olonishakin, Chief of Defense Staff. All service chiefs and the Inspector General of Police. All former Inspectors General of Police. Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Majesty Oba Ewari II Oba of Benin Kingdom. Public presentation of the book, Law on Prevention and Detection of Crimes by the Police in Nigeria. Announcer Organizing Committee. Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing. Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGB Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Welcome back. The menace of congestion at various ports and customs warehouses nationwide as a result of seized and uncleared cargoes remains a major concern to the federal government. In its bid, it is in a bid to eliminate congestion that the Nigeria Customs Service introduced a faster and more transparent process of disposing of such items through auction, hitherto fraught with irregularities. Correspondent Shegun Lawole has details of the inauguration of the new platform by the Controller General of Customs. Auction of seized and overtime cargoes in the past was done manually. The process described as grossly abused with attendant sundry corruption allegations against Customs Service, while congestion of the ports was the order of the day. With a clear departure from the traditional process, which allows only friends of customs and the rich, the electronic platform gives every prospective bidder equal opportunity to bid for two items in a manner that is transparent and accountable by logging on to designated websites. When I said abuse, the whole process was only open to those who have access to members of the Nigerian Customs Service. The process was also open to only those who had something to do with auction, in the sense that today we are, we are being threatened with court action by some concerned Nigerians that felt what we're doing would exclude them from what they are used to benefiting from. 
And I believe that was the idea why we came up with this. Following the inauguration by the Comptroller General of Customs, bidding for items on auction commences immediately. From the headquarters of the Nigerian Customs Service, Abuja, Shegun Lawole, NTA News. Power sector reform and the missing link formed the central focus of a discourse at the second quarter fellowship conferment of the Nigeria Society of Engineers. This was with a view to identifying the pertinent issues that have stalled the growth and development of the sector, despite efforts made by successive governments to bring efficiency and effectiveness into electricity business in Nigeria. Science correspondent Kirian Umayo reports. The Nigerian engineering family has over the years concerned itself with developmental issues that pertain to the overall well-being of the nation within the engineering template. This assertion came from President and Chairman of Council and Board of Fellows, Engineer Chris Okoye, who also informed the gathering that the privatization of the sector hinged on effectiveness, injection of massive funds, introduction of sophisticated technology, and new management techniques could not change the of history of the power sector, which still struggles to generate 4,000 kilowatts of electricity after five years. The highest output ever recorded, to the best of my knowledge, was 5,517 megawatts, and this was about in February 2015. The transmission network is weak and fragile, according to old age and poor power maintenance. Other speakers could not agree more, but suggested diligent planning and implementation of intervention mechanisms to surmount the power sector challenge. Whatever we do, privatization remains the only option. And we're looking forward to see that uh, after the privatization of the power sector, that competent hands should handle issues. I'm particularly working on conversion a biomass production of energy through palm canal shells. An opportunity, a platform to engage in a robust deliberation as they affect Nigeria's key infrastructural development. 24 engineers were conferred fellows of the Nigerian Society of Engineers on the occasion. Kirin Umayo, NTA News. If Nigeria is to survive in the next two years, she has no choice than to pay more attention to knowledge, especially in the area of science and technology. Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, Professor Abubakar Rashid, stated this while giving approval to Moshud Abiola University of Science and Technology in Ogun State. Franka Uzomaolua reports. Ogun State Governor Ibukunle Amusu receiving Certificate of Recognition for Moshuda Biola University of Science and Technology. In a world where technology has become the bedrock of development, Ogun State is striving to provide solutions to cybercrime, food and health security through the University of Science and Technology. We are going to get the best brain to come and help us, not just money, people that love and have the interest. We don't just do anything anyhow, it's that we will not do it at all. Anything that we want to do, uh, we have tagged it to the standard in service delivery, whether contract execution, wherever we find ourselves, you will see that we must do well. And given the hue and cry about the employability of Nigerian graduates, NUC Executive Secretary says the Commission will soon review the curriculum to make it more competitive to meet national and international needs. We are not just creating universities because of access alone. We are concerned about the integrity the sanctity of the degree Nigerian universities award. The Moshud Abiola University of Science and Technology is expected to take off at the Ogun State Polytechnic Abiokuta while the Polytechnic moves to Ibokia. We're also hoping to look at programs that will use science and technology for for addressing our power challenges. With the letter of recognition, Nigeria now has 46 state universities and a total of 153 universities. Franka Uzoma Olwa, NTN News. Content is key to success in this era of digital television. Executive Director Engineering of NTA, Stephen Moses Opanachi, said this at a meeting with management and staff of NTA Ilori, Kwara State. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday has details. 
The Executive Director of Engineering is in Ilori ahead of the digital switchover in Kwara State. Stephen Moses of Panachi advised the management and staff to be on top of their games towards ensuring the success of the digital switchover. We must design programs that is relevant to the needs of the people in Kwara State. 28 other content coming to compete with you will not be within Ilori or Kwara State. But what will make you to be an edge over them is your content. We'll do our best to ensure that we put ourselves permanently there. We'll try to make sure that whatever content we are going to provide will be for the best interest of the people of Kwara State. The executive director also took a facility tour of equipment in the station in Ilori, Kwara State. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. As the Federal Ministry of Environment approved Environmental Impact Assessment Report for construction of the 276-kilometer superhighway, Governor Ben Ayade has assured that funding of the project will not be a problem. The governor gave the assurance while speaking with journalists in Calabar. Government House correspondent Uduagetim has details. to journalists, Governor Ayade said the state is creating a new economic structure that will redefine Nigeria and with the huge mineral resources in the country. The governor commended President Muhammadu Buhari and the acting president Yemi Oshibanjo for keeping faith and seeing that the deep vision of the project is actualized. He also commended the Federal Minister of Environment, who came out with the approved document to kickstart the project. While promising to construct the superhighway and deep sea ports, Governor Ayade applauded his Deputy Professor Ivarisu, members of his cabinet and engineering team for working for the achievement of the Environmental Impact Assessment Report. I want to especially also thank God who has made it possible for the approval of the EIA to come. For those who thought that this was impossible to get an approval for the superhighway, for those who thought that it was almost impossible for us to actually start the project, for those who even fabricated stories that the whole idea of the superhighway was intended to go into a forestation for the pressure of it, they shall see construction work that will start. In Calabar, Udwak Etam, NTA News. Alternative dispute resolution mechanism and placing premium on the content of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 are issues the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogen, wants newly appointed judges and caddies to explore. Aliyu Tukuru quotes Justice Onogen at an induction course for the new ventures as saying these will eliminate delays in the dispensation of justice. The higher number of pending cases in Nigerian courts is making judicial officials to think of imbibing positive attitudes and ideas that will enhance administration of justice in the country. That explains the conduct of these induction calls for the newly appointed judges and caddies to equip them for the challenges on the higher bench and to also expose them to judicial ethics, which are key to judicial excellence. While delays in court proceedings occasioned by unnecessary adjournment of cases and non-availability of accused persons or witnesses continue to pose challenges to the administration of criminal justice system, the Chief Justice of Nigeria says courts must insist on enforcement of the arbitration clause in matters of breach of contract. This, he said, will not only address delays but also prevent abusive recourse to courts. You must hold yourself to a high and impeccable moral standard as provided by the Code of Conduct for Judicial Officers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let me use this medium to caution you all to refrain and shun all forms of corrupt practices, bearing in mind the oath of office which you all sought. The induction course has participants from across the country and nine newly appointed judges from the Gambia in Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Time to link up with Ademola in Lagos for more reports. Demola, over to you. Good evening once again and welcome to Lagos. 
In order to win the fight against domestic violence of any form, the wife of the Oni of Ife Olori, Mira Ola Ogusi, says there must be stringent laws and policies to curb the evil trend and punish perpetrators. Olori Ogusi was asked to work as part of a lightning campaign against domestic violence, especially violence against women in Lagos. She was accompanied by some Nigerian celebrities and legal practitioners. Which commenced from Falamu Arula Road, Ikui, saw several women and advocates of women's rights walk through Victoria Island to sensitize residents on the need to stop violence against women and men. According to statistics, one in three women is abused daily and most times die in the hands of an intimate partner. Olu Mura Odinosi, while addressing the gathering, advocated for a stronger support system for women to fight emotional and domestic violence. We are trying to accentuate policies to be brought forth and sponsored as a bill. There has to be laws that protect women. Women can't be abused anymore. If our grandparents, if they had fought for this, our generation would be suffering from this. We've identified um, about nine divisions that we are specially trained people in conjunction with DFID and UKA and to attend to um, sexual and domestic violence victims. Police will no longer treat it like the family has been, which is crime. Celebrities who took part in the work are of the opinion that it is crucial for victims of domestic violence to always speak out when abused. I watched my dad with my mom until she left. I was in the hospital at the first location. So if my mom did not leave, God forbid, I probably wouldn't have a, my kids wouldn't have a grandma right now looking after them when I'm not there. We always to ourselves to pass it on to the generation behind us so that they are aware, they know when enough is enough, they know to balance of any sort. The message is for you to speak out, it's for us to stop this barbaric act. The advocates are calling on the government to make the protection of the girl, child and women a priority as women and children remain vulnerable to attacks. Efforts are now being intensified to take the fight against illicit drug abuse and trafficking in Nigeria to the community level across the country. The Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, National Agency for Food Drug Administration and Control, NAFTAC, and a non-governmental organization are to work together in taking the sensitization campaign against drug abuse to the youth at the grassroots level. Abelore Ogbara has the detail. Illicit drug abuse and trafficking is a global problem ravaging youth, dislocating families and leading to increase in crime rates such as rape, armed robberies, kidnapping and other social vices. In Nigeria, statistics shows that over 40% of youth are drug abusers, while many more are at risk of being exposed to illicit drug abuse. Fighting the drug scourge has therefore become a priority bringing NDLEA, NAVDAC and a non-governmental organization together to develop a sustainable strategy that will take a licensing campaign to the grassroots level. We discovered that those arrested in 2016, there was a reduction of 521 compared to the number of persons arrested in 2015. Achieving a drug-free community is the goal of this campaign, and it entails highlighting the dangers of drug abuse and trafficking. Community leaders, religious organizations, and youth groups are to be involved in the campaign. Over a period of one year, we have had to um, manage and um, see over 240 people on with drug addiction issues. We need to position ourselves to prevent the use of drugs at the younger level. Rehabilitation and integration of victims of drug abuse is to also be coordinated among the agencies to ensure the sustainability and effectiveness of the process. In Lagos, Abolo Yagbara, NT News. We are still on to NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages, after which the news continues from Abuja. Stay with us. Yes, so very delicious in the minute. 
The difference is the taste. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights! How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliamp per battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Welcome to the new world of superb taste. Now here in Nigeria. Everyone, try it and enjoy the delicious goodness. We are bringing our new noodles to every corner of the country. That's right. It tastes great. It tastes fantastic. It's time for a new noodle. Nigeria, you want the truly delicious taste? Nigeria. as data bolus by month end on Smart Connect. Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, wishes to invite administrative officers, auditors, accountants, investigative officers, budget and planning officers, procurement and stock verification officers on grade level 8 and above to its four-day workshop on National Sensitization Workshop on Whistleblower Protection Act. Content of the workshop includes overview of the Whistleblowers Act, Framework of the whistleblowing in the Nigeria economy, financial management and control measures, anti-corruption laws, audit and public accountability, challenges of whistleblowers act and protection and security of the whistleblowers. Date Monday 31st July to Thursday 3rd August 2017. Venue ASCOM Complex to Put Badagri. Fee 75,000 Naira per participant excluding lodging and feeding. Please note Arrival and registration for the workshop will be done on Sunday, 30th July 2017. Account name, ASCON e-collection account, payable at any commercial bank. Account number, 023-00-5586-1019. For inquiry, contact workshop director, GA Afolayu on 080-331823-44. Or workshop coordinator on 080-33-889153. Announcer, Director General, ASCOM. Welcome back to NTA Network News. Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo joined other heads of state and government in Addis Ababa for the 29th Assembly of the African Union. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports that the focus of the meeting is on harnessing the benefits in the increasing population of youth for a greater African continent. It was the former American president that said the best way to predict the future is by creating that future that we craved for. And that's exactly what African leaders are doing here, having realized that the African youth are hungry for actions and need results. The United Nations being represented here by the Deputy Secretary General, Nigerians Amina Muhammad, reports that unlike other regions, 
the proportion of youth in Africa's total population is rising. 226 million of age 15 to 24, she says. While this growth is said to provide the opportunity for a demographic dividend, it also presents the risk of soaring rates of youth unemployment and other challenges. Acting President Yemi Oshimbaju told the African leaders that the Nigerian government have put in place strategic policies that are aimed at addressing the challenge holistically. Basically for us, we're doing quite a bit, you know, and we think that there is a lot that we can give in terms of our experience. We um, hired about 200,000 uh, young graduates. We did, an, as you know, it's called Empower, an online portal, and we're also training online. I think it's probably the largest number of people being trained, the largest number of teachers, farm workers, public health officials being trained, you know, at once. So for us, I think, you know, this is innovative. I think it's uh, groundbreaking. And uh, sharing it with uh, the other member uh, nations, well, I'm, I'm sure that it will be an eye-opener for, for many. And it may well be the way to go for some as well. The meeting discussed issues such as the African Union reforms, peace and security, and funding for the African Union. I, I think everyone acknowledges how far we have gone. And, you know, everyone acknowledges that as a military force, Boko Haram is completely degraded. But then we also acknowledge the fact that there are still uh, those opportunistic um, sorts of raids, uh, suicide bombers and those kinds of things. So I think that there is a sense that, you know, we're involved in, you know, asymmetric warfare. We understand that they're no longer a serious fighting force, but they still con constitute a menace. I mean that we continue to support the African Union, especially as they took up the theme, um, harnessing the, the dividend of youth. I think it's very, very important that we really start to put down the investments, not just in, in education, but in the kind of businesses that they can engage with. The leaders also examined cross-cutting issues affecting African economies and the opportunities and options that could be exploited for continental transformation. From the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, Jide Onifate, NT News. Let's now join Zainab in Sokoto for more reports from that zone. Thank you, Andy, and welcome. Former head of state general Yakub Goen has cautioned Nigerians against negative utterances and hate speech capable of undermining the corporate existence of the country. He was speaking in Sokoto at the Northwest Zone National Prayer Rally organized by Nigeria Praise. Dalato Abdullahi has the report. The prayer session brought together different churches and clergymen of different denominations to seek God's intervention in keeping the country together as one indivisible entity. <laughs> Chairman Nigeria Press General Yakubu Gon advised Nigerians to desist from unguarded utterances capable of disintegrating the country. He pointed out that the 30 month of civil war experienced by Nigerians will continue to serve as lesson which nobody will ever like such ugly trend to happen and advocated for sustainable prayer in the country and diaspora. We can find the solution to our problems just as we did uh, during the civil war, at the end of the civil war. If, to say, foreigners uh, have gotten involved, we might not have been able to solve our problem the way we've done. Bishop of Sokoto Catholic Diocese, Reverend Matthew Hassan Kuka, underscored the role played by General Gowon, which, according to him, have continued to make Nigeria remain as one indivisible entity among the Committee of Nations. The theme for the National Prayer Rally is tagged enduring masses, love and understanding among us. In Sokoto, Dalato Abdullahi, NTA News. Sokoto State Police Command has reaffirmed its commitment to ensuring protection of lives and property of the citizenry. Commissioner of Police, Muhammad Abdul Qadir, made the affirmation when he led a combined team of security agencies in Sokoto on a route march. Sheikh Mohammed Dati has that story. This is a combined team of security personnel that comprise the Army, Police, Civil Defense, Customs and Road Safety 
chanting slogans to demonstrate their agility. The Professional Police Muhammad al said it is the maiden edition of the quarterly route match between security agencies in Sokoto. The idea, he said, is to strengthen the synergy, togetherness, and mutual respect among sister security agencies. The route match is also to show to the public, especially hoodlums, that they are combat ready for any eventuality. This, this particular moment today is to show that there's togetherness, there's trust, there's confidence building, and mutual respect among the services that are involved in this exercise. Turning to the lingering threats by other groups to Ibos and the agitation for Biafra State, the Commissioner of Police said they have met at different levels with the Inspector General of Police and other security agencies on the issue. He, however, assured of doing their best to ensure that peaceful nature of Sokoto is not breached. In Sokoto, show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to you, IND. Thank you, Zainab. A federal government sets to deploy technology to enhance tax compliance. Details on Business News with Joy Uzo. Good evening and welcome to Business News. The federal government will deploy and heavily rely on technology to increase tax compliance under the recently launched Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme, VIDES. Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeo Shunwu, stated this in Abuja, explained that the signing of an executive order by the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, on assets declaration underlines the seriousness attached to the scheme, which would be vigorously implemented. A statement signed by the director of Information, Federal Ministry of Finance, Salis Udambata, indicates that at 6% to GDP, Nigeria's tax compliance rate was low, while most developed nations were at a range of 30 to 32%. As part of strategies deployed, the finance minister revealed that government had deployed data mining to compile data on thousands of taxpayers, which showed the level of non-compliance and tax evasion. She added that the scheme is also to help increase tax awareness and education Education, as the community tax licensing officers who are graduates recruited through the Empire program would go into their communities, schools and other public places to raise awareness and help increase tax enrollments. The minister gave assurance of the judicious use of funds, saying that tax payment is part of the civic partnership between people and government, which would enhance participation and accountability. The Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, increased to 52.9 index points in June 2017, showing expansion in the manufacturing sector for the third consecutive month. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, reveals this in its PMI report for June 2017 this week. The PMI is an indicator of the economic health of the manufacturing sector and is based on five major indicators, new orders, inventory levels, production, supplier deliveries, and the employment environment. The current economic recession in the country has increased the volume of fraud cases in the banking industry with the attendant loss of money. Latest figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN's website, indicate that the banking sector recorded 31,736 fraud cases involving the sum of 16.5 billion naira between January 2014 and December 2016. As part of efforts to check the menace, financial analysts called on the CBN and the Nigerian Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation to step up regulatory oversight, advising that sensitive positions in banks should not be given to those who are not members of relevant professional bodies. Finally, equities market closed today on a negative note as the NSC All Share Index depreciated by 1.05% to close at 32,769.80 basis points. Now, a quick check at all the closing figures on the floor of the exchange. The stock market report concludes the business news package. The bulletin continues shortly. Thank you, Joy. Ogo Chukuka is standing by now with more reports from Benin.
Good evening and welcome to Benin. The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Edo State Command, says the state will no longer be comfortable for operators of illegal refineries and vendors of petroleum pipelines. This is the message officers took to the Abbasagbon village in Uwande local government area during the destruction of some illegal refineries there. Good luck in Naini reports. Officers of the command who were mobilized into the Abbasagbon forest to locate the refineries were in this forest for several hours conducting the search. Having gone through some harrowing experience, the officers discovered the location of the refineries and some of the refined products, jerry cans filled with petroleum products. Other items recovered were generating sets and pumping machines, among others. The success of the operation is as a result of some intelligence reports on the existence of illegal refineries in the area. State Commandant, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Mr. Markin Deaila, said the command is prepared to checkmate the activities of vendors in the state and advise them to relocate. People who have the intention to go into this should be aware that we are everywhere and my men are everywhere. Once we get into of their operation, we will definitely clamp down on them. Mr. Ayinla said the suspects will be prosecuted as soon as investigations are completed. In Benin, I am good luck in Aini, NT News. In the meantime, the Ondo state government has inaugurated a committee for the successful hosting of the second National Council of Niger Delta meeting scheduled to hold in Akure between 7th and 12th of next month, where issues bordering on the development of the region will be discussed. Doris Solumoko has details. The National Council on Niger Delta is a high-level consultative body for the Niger Delta region, which comprises representation from all the Niger Delta states, federal government, ministries, departments, and agencies. The August meeting is with the theme, Fast Tracking the Development and Peace of Niger Delta Region. Undo State Governor, Mr. Uluwaru Timi Akiridulu, who was represented by his deputy, Agwola Ajayi, said, the theme is apt considering national history and development, cries of marginalization, and antisocial behaviors, as well as cases of kidnapping in the country. This is also established to provide a sustainable framework for development of the Niger Delta region. He therefore inaugurated the local organizing committee, saddled with the responsibility of a successful host of the meeting. Chairman of the committee, Mr. Gwenga Edema, assured of the readiness of the committee to give the proposed meeting a success. In Akure, Doris Ulumoko, NTN. And as our contribution from Benin, the news continues in Abuja. Thank you, Ogo Chukuka. And we've got a bit on sports just ahead. This is NTA News. Be organized, trained and fully equipped we are the new improved nigeria police force we fight crime we bust syndicates whatever the crime wherever the hideout the nigeria police force will get you busted stop kidnapping armed robbery murder pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities be productive be security conscious. Join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAFDAC laws. National regional and international collaborations cutting edge technologies including the mobile authentication service NAPDAC as an agency is indeed doing so much to protect the health of our nation i urge everyone to support NAPDAC in reading the country of pet drugs and unwholesome products let us support NAPDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, 
safeguard in the health of the nation. Now for some stories around the globe. Let's join Ominio Den. We begin this segment with reports from Africa. African G5 countries comprising Mali, Mauritania, Burkina Faso, the new force will operate in coordination with French troops to checkmate terrorists in the region. And away from Africa, Beijing has called the presence of a U.S. warship near a disputed island in the South China Sea a serious political and military provocation. China responded by sending military vessels and fighter jets to the area. French President Emmanuel Macron has proposed a radical overhaul of the country's government. Mr. Macron says he plans to cut the number of lawmakers by a third. Doing so, the president said, will provide a more efficient government and put France on a radical new path. Saudi Arabia and three other Arab states have extended the deadline for Qatar to accept a list of demands of phase further sanctions in 48 hours. The initial deadline for Qatar to agree to the group stating demands, including the shutting down of Al Jazeera network, expired on Sunday. Qatar Foreign Affairs Minister Sheikh Mohammed Rahman Al Thani is already in Kuwait to deliver a formal response from the Emir of Qatar to the Emir of Kuwait, who is mediating in the Gulf crisis. Qatar had denied funding extremism. That's the wrap on the news from this segment. The news continues. Dende Sony has more on sports update. This is Tomapoya is confident of winning more titles on the West.